is not just the best of today, we are talking about the most open platform going into the future with over 400 uh, different devices compatible with smart things. So I'm gonna give everyone a little bit of a taste of how those pieces connect with TV to help the user in everything from the moment they first unbox and open up a brand new Samsung QLED TV for 2018 to the times where they're going to actually look for that content and interact for it. We're gonna cover it all. So if you wanna see exactly what we're talking about with new smart, Effortless setup, smart things on TV, then we're gonna go into voice solution where we can get to our content more easily, and then we're gonna pick up Universal Guide where we're gonna aggregate that, all that content into one place. This How many of you, when dealing with a smart TV, know your Wi-Fi password right off the top of your head? And, anybody? I don't trust you, I don't know why, it's just, no, my wife. how many characters? Uh, nine. Mmm, that's okay. So when we're looking at most things, <laughs> so many of eight. <laughs> yeah, go for now. Gotcha. But when we're looking at those security things, it becomes an increasing matter of risk to the user. And one of those things is maybe they don't have that. Mine is 24 characters. I can tell you that much right now. I have uppercase. I have special characters mixed in there. I even have an underscore somewhere. I'm not sure where. But the bottom line is that it's it's a hurdle. So with this, we are now. Powering on our TV for the first time, and it's going to automatically search with using Bluetooth Low Energy devices, mobile devices specifically. Oh, I found one. So going into Smart Things, which again is the key to all of this, all we need is a Samsung account on Smart Things, and then immediately the TV recognizes the device and says, "Hey, I'm your new TV that you just bought. Aren't you happy for me?" Yes. But you want to set it up, and you don't want to spend a lot of time doing it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and set up. This is not your typical setup on a TV. Typically, you'd be having your remote out, you'd be looking through things, maybe getting your, your Wi-Fi password, hopefully not off your router itself because you never changed it, um, and being able to start and log in. But the TV is already conducting this with the phone. So all I'm gonna do is agree to the terms and conditions, and then it's immediately going to start transferring that information back and forth. And on top of that, you're going to actually see, if you look on the big screen, it's automatically detecting my devices that I already have plugged in. Again, another consumer pain point. Do I want to have to go in there and label HDMI 1, 2, 3, and 4 as you know, Blu-ray player, set-top box? I don't want to have to do that. I want the TV to do it for me. So it's going to do that for me. And again, remember, I can control all of those devices with one remote, or in that case, my phone. So either one. Now it identifies my location. And last, I'm going to select a couple of apps that I want the TV to preload that I find interesting. Maybe Spotify, Facebook Video, Vudu. And then, you know what? I think, I think we'll do one more thing. How about we go into Spotify and we have the phone log us in on Mac with the TV? Does that sound good? So that way we don't have to look up our account, we don't have to have them send our password that we've forgotten to our email and spend about half an hour trying to get into it. So I'm going to allow it. And now I'm logged in Spotify right off my phone. I did not have to lift a finger other than to press on the screen. How long did that take? A couple minutes maybe, probably less. Done. My TV and I are ready to go with my apps logged in and all of my devices recognized, ready to be controlled. One simple place. Welcome to 2018. But you know what? I talked about the IoT platform of smart things earlier. And I want to show you what that looks like on the big screen because we can have control on our phone, but where do users spend a lot of their time in the home? Maybe it's kicked back on the couch watching things. So where better to have a smart things dashboard and show all my connected devices than my big screen? Show my smart home. There you go. So you're looking at different devices, again, connected all through the power of smart things, whether it's the cloud or the application. So things like my front door camera that I can notice who's coming to greet me. Maybe it's somebody with a box. Maybe it's somebody to take my box. Hopefully not. <laughs> things like my washer, if my clothes are done. My garage door opener that I left. Maybe I left my home and I forgot to close it. Like for me, I can just open up the app. I can see it and I can close it. Or if I'm lazy and I'm sitting on the couch, a, my wife or significant other left it open. I'm going to go ahead and close it straight from my TV just by selecting it. Or maybe conversely, I'm getting ready to watch a movie. 
me and my significant other have a baby. Relatively new. Seeing she's you know, active in the crib, mm, you're probably gonna have to check on her. I'm comfy, sorry. So these are the use cases like this where we can see. Now, one other thing that you're gonna notice up on the top is we have these different types of modes uh, where you can get into controlling different devices from one simple command. Good morning. You know what, good morning. I had a rough night last night, maybe I had a party over. I want good morning to slowly, slowly enhance those lights, bring them up a little bit, not full force. I want them to turn on the AC. I also want my little smart robot vacuum to start vacuuming up all the crumbs that I left and all my dirty party guests left around. And then I want to dock at home. So I can select these different modes and automatically multiple devices will start doing their own thing. Maybe I want to check out what's in the fridge. I can just simply say, I'm home, shows me what's in the fridge on the family hub. And I can say, oh, I have cookie dough. Cool, I feel like making cookies. You guys feel like making cookies? Anybody have some out there? <laughs> good. So I wanna make some of those, those look awesome. Great, I tell my smart uh, oven range to kick on and preheat. I know I have cookies in there, but I have to actually bake them. That's, that's the only thing, I actually still have to put them in. But all this stuff is done straight through the dashboard. So all these devices can do that. And that's really the strength of this. So when we're looking at that. One other thing that we noticed, you notice how I use the voice to control this, yes? Let's go further. Let's, let's talk about, I don't know, let's find some content. Maybe watch Game of Thrones maybe? Right. Find Game of Thrones on YouTube. Cool. There you go. So maybe I want to check out some Game of Thrones stuff. Maybe I want to see interviews with some of the cast. Whatever it is that I want to do, I can do through voice. Maybe I want to check out the temperature outside. What's the weather in New York City? Now don't look at tomorrow. That's, <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> but as you can see, sunny, great, feeling good. A little bit chilly, but not nothing bad. So there's all these things. Oh wait, we took a picture earlier, didn't we? Anybody want to see it? Uh, some of you are like, yeah. And other people are like, eh. <laughs> well, guess what? It's going up. <clears throat> Show my last photo. And again, when it comes to security, this is something Samsung is also considering. So if you want to have to make sure that nobody can just access these photos, that's where you have the PIN number. This is important. But conversely, if you're that type that says, ah, I don't care, I'm good. I just want to instantly be able to do it through voice. That's okay, you can bypass this. But for right now, we're gonna go ahead and jump into it. Now, that's not you, but we're gonna get there. We'll get there. There you are. There you go. It'll blow it up. Yeah. Ta-da! You have to take a game. No, why? I'm, almost... I'm not in the Oh, you're not in the photo? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I apologize. We'll, we'll get another one then before we go. So doing these different things through voice command, it, it's, it's fun to do, but it, the realistic part of it, it's simplifying things. You notice how I didn't have to link the phone up and go to screen mirror, and I didn't have to go to share or anything like that. I simply gave the remote a voice command, and you're there. Very simple, and that's the whole idea with this, is making it more efficient. Now, I'm gonna move over 